Hi, this is Michael Becker, and in this lesson of Tinderbox, we're actually not going to do a lesson. We're going to do an interview with Roberto, who's down in Sao Paulo. He's a script writer and has given us some really keen insights on how to use Tinderbox for script writing. And it's a tremendous session, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi there, this is Michael Becker, and welcome to this Tinderbox session, where I'm going to be doing an interview with Roberto Morea, who is a a uh, script writer down in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Roberto has been kind enough to uh, give us a session to share with us how he's using Tinderbox um, and both the things that really excite him about it and the areas where he's having challenges. Um, in our pre-interview for the session, he showed me some of the things that he's doing and it's super exciting. So um, let's just jump right in and get to it. So uh, Roberto, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us today. Okay, nice. I, I really like to uh, have this dialogue about Thunderbox because I have used it a lot, and at the same time, I fight with it a lot. Also. <laughs> yeah, and just so you know, you're not alone. I mean, that's uh, you know, one of the beautiful things of Tinderbox is its flexibility and all that it's it's possible. But at the same time, um, that flexibility also brings challenges because yes. you know, it, you know, it it it, it it provides so little structure that it's hard to remember everything that you that that you that you know that you can do and need to do. Um, so, uh, really briefly, just uh, so our audience knows a little bit about you, you live down in São Paulo, Brazil, correct? Yes, I am a, a teacher at São Paulo University. I teach script writing. At the same time, I am a filmmaker. I've done three feature films. Um, and that's about it. Oh, no, that, that's more than enough. That's ex that's super <laughs> exciting. And um, one of the things you'd mentioned in our in our pre-interview that you were uh, you you really value Tinderbox because Tinderbox is able enables you to do things that no other script writing software has uh, has been possible for you. Um, and that includes automating some of the activities. Um, it includes um, you know using the map view for illustrating your your um, your characters um, as, and most importantly, you mentioned um, the ability to re use attributes, uh, you know, and add data to your scenes to help you mm -hmm. uh, navigate your, um, your programs. So if, if you wouldn't mind, you had a file that you were going to share with us and we can yes, walk through yes, it and highlight some points. Yeah. So okay. this is a map for the scenes in the film. I usually divide the film in eight blocks. There's people who divide in four. There are many different uh, ideas of structure for a film. I like 15, I think 15 minutes, you have to have something happening after 15 minutes in a film in order to keep the rhythm. So Yeah, and so let me pause you right there. So just to highlight a couple of things. So what Roberto has done here is he has created, uh, as he's noted, eight blocks. So each of these eight blocks are adornments um, that he has. Uh, and uh, each of the squares is one of the scenes in the adornment. Um, now, you mentioned you like to have an event. Um, what, what did you call it in, in our, uh, you know, um, uh, a pivotal point when there is a turning point, I think is the term you yes. use. And it here you're really used, you know, and if you see at the top right corner, uh, what Roberto's done is he's used badges, an X badge, uh, to signify in each of his scenes visually as um, the ability to signal a turning point uh, in his um, in his scene. So that visual is really helpful for you. You suggested, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and what is and what is the blue and the and the white color means? What does that mean to you? In green. The blue. These are scenes that happen at night, and the white ones during the day. Okay. In, and what does green mean? And this green is something uh, I don't. Uh, I have also a, a notation for scenes that are connected one to okay. the other, and scenes where you have a, an ellipsis. Ellipsis. Oh yeah. Ellipsis. No. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it is green, this green means this scene is not connected with that one and that one, you know? I see. Uh, but it's something that is from uh, from the past because yes. 
uh, I also can change the colors to see when there are connections or not. You know, this mm -hmm. is also something that is important for me when I am writing to understand when I have sequences of scenes and scenes that are isolated. You no. Know? Yes. And, and the other thing you mentioned, too, that I thought, and we'll stay in that view for a minute. Um, if you can click on one of your scenes, um, you noted that you've mm -hmm. used attributes uh, for each of your scenes. And so you were able to say you can you show the location, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, whether or not it's day or night, uh, the, the characters. characters. Uh, you know, and I really love this one, the tension. And so you said there was a scale from like one to five uh, that would mm -hmm. you know, show the tension. And then uh, you noted that if uh, a scene gets really tense, you may change the color mm -hmm. slightly so that it actually shows red so you can visually see um, tension, for example, in your map view as well. You then also trauma. I don't remember what that. That's the yes, yeah, the plot. The you said. plot. The different okay. plots in the film. No. And then the emotion state of the individual, uh, the tempo, um, and then duration. The duration of that particular scene. The duration. So yes. yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, maybe we can pop over to outline view, and you can show somebody uh, show the audience this now as well. And so tell, talk to us about how you're leveraging and using duration to help organize the timing of your, of your movie. I think we have to, uh, usually a scene lasts for two minutes, one minute is a kind of arbitrary choice, but you need to have an idea of duration. No? So I give each scene a duration and then uh, in this column, I have the moment in the film the scenes happens. So I just uh, uh, make um, uh, an addition between this, that, and that. I have 10. No? Okay. So, and, and presumably you have a rule or an edict that's doing that. Mm -hmm. so you're saying look at your sibling and then add the, add yes. the tempo together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if okay. you want, I can look at this. Yeah, hit command one and take a look at it. Here. Yeah. No? Yeah, Tempo. and so what that's, so, and that's a really important point. And so the point, the point you mentioned then is you could scroll all the way down and say, okay, I know that this scene's happening at the 15 minute point or the yes. 10 minute point. And you mentioned that there's no other screenwriting software that, that, that's does possible it. for doing, that does that. No. Okay, so I think that's critically important. Now, the one other thing that you emphasized that I thought was really neat mm -hmm. and I'd never seen before. Um, let's come back to that. Let's not go to that first. Is let's say you want to move a scene. You don't have to do it because I don't want to mess up your real file. But if you were to move one scene to another um, in in the script, you know the way you have your adornment set up is. Would you mind showing us the command? You know, click an adornment and showing mm -hmm. us the command one. So on your um, action of the adornment, you're okay. on add action, you're adding the episode. So on adornment one, it would say this scene is in episode one or the, you know, the block one, and then you know, one through eight. Um, then if you were to move that, uh, the X, and essentially the X position, if you're gonna move mm. that scene from there to say another scene within the, um, the program, that's you effectively moving its X position. So yes. if you wouldn't mind, can you now go to the outline view and show us that notes? Uh, or you can do it here. Show us that, uh, select a mm. note and show us huh. the notes um, 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 uh, you know, sorting. You have here, the episode is one, yeah. no? Right. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing is a way to have the outline in the same order as the, the map view. And you I've know? not seen anyone do this before. So that's really, really powerful. So if you wouldn't mind for me, go back and show, share us with us a click mm -hmm. on a note and show us the, so, or go to the outline view and show us the sort, how are you doing sort. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're selected a particular episode. And then if you look at sort, um, tell us what's happening there. Mm, uh, first, it orders by the episode, episode one, two, three, until eight. And then inside the episode, by exposition. It's really easy to, to order the right. outline so, in this way, you know? And so what's essentially happening is if you move X left or right, mm -hmm. the outline view is gonna automatically change by that order. 
And that's yes. just brilliant. I've never seen that before. And that's really exciting. For example, okay. let's do it. <laughs> no? Yeah. If I put the green one here and we go to the outline, now the green one is here. Yeah. And it's in scene block two and it's moved down. So and yes. that's, that's just absolutely fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that you wanted to say is something else that no other scripts, scripting software does for you is the, um, is, is the map view in helping you organize the relationship of your characters. Can you show us that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so these are your characters and, and how they're related with each other. And then you mentioned you've created a bio for the um, characters as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, that the, the question is, you don't have a place where you put all that. So you can do a map like that with other programs, but you, are, you have to go outside your ambient. And um, I think it's really nice to be able to work all the time inside in the box. You know? Yeah. So, so, when, so what you're saying is, you know, so while other programs may make it, you know, prettier, if you will, like Aeon for timelines, um, having everything in one environment and being able to look at your data in all of these different views is incredibly powerful. Yeah. Now, let's go and show me one other thing. So another thing you said that Tinderbox is unique, that no other tool lets you do is to be able to um, quickly uh, find all of the scenes a particular character ah. is in. So I have, for example, for example all the scenes with Carlão, uh, and it's an agent and the query inside the third version of my, inside this note, mm -hmm. uh, all the notes that contains Carlão or in the text contain Carlão. Okay. So, so now, let, let, now let's stop you here. When we first introduced mm -hmm. the, uh, and started having our conversation, you kind of said you had a love-hate relationship with Tinderbox and that you find it really useful. Um, but one of the challenges is you struggle with the syntax and learning the language of the coding. And, yeah. um, you know, and you get a space wrong, you get a carrot wrong, a straight quote turns to a curly quote, your code breaks. And you find that really frustrating. Yeah. Yes? That's yeah. the point. And I, I I read all the tutorials. I I think there is a you know a huge amount of work in order to help us use Tinderbox. Yeah. But at the same time, it's something that is before that because I have no idea how to code. <laughs> oh, yes. I am a writer, so it's I, I just you know I need something. Mm -hmm. I try to understand how to do that things that I need and I improve my template. You know, it's right. And then the point, the and then the point you were saying though, too, though, one of your challenges was um, you'll figure it out and you're like, Eureka, I figured it out. And then you won't need to do that again for a month. Yes. And then you've forgotten how you did it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the challenge. And so maybe you can walk through with our audience here too. Like I noticed some of your other agents aren't working. Uh, and maybe you can show them how we fix that for you. Like, um, yes. you know, some of your characters are missing uh, and you weren't uh, clear on how to do that. So like, if you click on the one above, you'll notice how yes, the Luana here doesn't have yeah. anyone there. And why don't you, first, before you change anything, before you change mm -hmm. anything, tell us, tell us what, why it's not working. Yes, because uh, I changed the, I had the, no, uh, a place where there were all the events were inside one um, one container. Yeah. And uh, now I decided that I will change all the time the order of the events. I have many versions, and uh, I now don't think I have to preserve the different versions. You know, mm -hmm. before I was trying to preserve the version. So I had a container with events and I have another container with version one, version two, version three. Yes. Now I just have one container with all the events Got it. and it's easier. Mm -hmm. But 
Uh, but when you change the name, you forgot to change yes. your agent. So you yes, stop working. I have to change from this container called events to Enredo 3. Okay. Now and I have do... 57. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then if you don't mind. Luana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't mind, maybe you can walk through for the audience what I showed you on how to apply the code prototype and what that meant for you to make it a little easier. Yes, but do you know, for example, you learn, you told me to use the code prototype, mm -hmm. but really I couldn't understand what I did. Okay. <laughs> because right, so, I, yeah. that was an agent, no? Yeah. It's and an agent. I, it's an agent. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, and now it's a, the code prototype makes what to an agent okay well it doesn't make anything to an agent an agent is an agent it's an agent but what, yes but what the code prototype does is it allows you well you know what prototypes do so prototypes mm -hmm. allow you to essentially create a template for your notes mm -hmm. so that you can display have it automatically display certain attributes so for example when we added the code prototype we showed the um the attributes agent action agent query and agent priority Correct? Ah, okay. So now if you go select Luna and go, if you right mouse click on the little yellow box, mm -hmm. now the little yellow box, right mouse click there. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to apply the code the prototype code. to the agent. So that now applies that prototype to that agent so that now you can actually see the agent mm -hmm. query. So you, you can actually edit your, um, your Direct. agent query there directly without having mm -hmm. to go and open the inspector. Okay, I understand okay. now. Okay. Now the other thing that does too, and why why the code prototype is nice, is um, the code prototype um, changes the text field and it makes it a code format. And so therefore, if you copy that text and paste it into the text field, this is really important. And let me show you an example of this. So you see how the the quotes stay straight quotes. They don't get turned to curly quotes. Now, let me do me, do me a favor. Um, um, uh, under, can you add a new note somewhere in the file? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and not in an agent, just anywhere else. Yeah, like right there, just randomly add a new note. Sure. Mm. And call it test. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you got to give it a name. Test. Yeah, okay. Now, if you were to go and paste that code in the text field, Paste the content. No, just paste the content. Yeah, paste that content. Ah, again, okay. Picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. and paste it in there. Okay. So now if you start typing, like go ahead and change the name of Luna real quick. Just in one space. I just want to demonstrate something and I type something different. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, now you're right there. So you see mm -hmm. how the, the, the quotes changed? They changed, mm -hmm. from, they changed to curly quotes. Now that will break your agents. Uh, okay. your, your agents need straight quotes. Mm -hmm. Curly formatted quotes will break the agent because that's just a visual, uh, a, a visual tool that's not good for code. And so by, you, by applying the code agent, uh, the code template, or uh, excuse me, code prototype to an agent, you can then use the text field to edit your code yeah, without, okay. the, without the curly quotes changing. Mm, okay. And so that, that just, it gives you more space to be able to edit your, 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 um, your code. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. So, and then you can delete things in that. So, um, you know, anything else that you'd like to share with us in your insights on how to do? Um... Let me see if there is something. No, I think that the, what would be nice and what I will try to do next time <laughs> is to make a kind of, you know, with using tension and mm -hmm. a kind of heat map. You no, know, yes. With, that would be nice. But yeah, and, and, and so there is a there is a way to do that. Um, and if mm -hmm. we wanted to show people that doing that in real time, um, mm -hmm. you know, we could have, you know, essentially, uh, for example, uh, and a simple example would be, for instance, if there's high tension, show a mm -hmm. red flag. Yeah. Ah. Right. So mm -hmm. let me show you an example on how to do that. So go ahead and pick a note. A note. Okay. Okay. And we'll just do a real simple example. And so you're, you see there that the tension is two, correct? Mm -hmm. So go ahead now and um, hit command one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And go to the edict. Click in the edict. 
Okay. Yeah. And now type the word if. Okay, parentheses. Dollar sign. Uh, and we can even make this easier. Um, yeah, so actually, let's just make this easier. No, go back up. We don't need it. Uh, we can make the heat map later, but just go back up. Hit dollar sign flag. No, no, uh, get rid of the if. Get, get, dollar get rid sign of the flag. Um, yeah, delete the if. Delete the if. Flag. Hmm. Go, yeah, go yeah. ahead and delete the if and the parenthesis. Ah, okay, with. Mm -hmm. And the parenthesis. Mm -hmm. Okay, and say dollar sign flags equals mm -hmm. uh yeah a uh, note just one equal because you're, you're going to sign it um and then say tension dollar tension. sign tension and i need a capital there you go all right and then uh put a semicolon to end it That? No, semi, semi semicolon. Semicolon. Huh? Semicolon. Ah. There you go. Oh. Not a colon, semicolon. There you go. Now go ahead and hit enter. Okay. And hit run. Run. Okay. Okay. So now you'll see the, uh, we can program it where we could actually have um, uh, little flags pop up and we can then adjust the color so that if you see tension, that color could be, you know, green for one and red and red for five and yellow for three. So the, ah, and the that flag be, uh, here, the, the, ah. the flag there, mm -hmm. and that could be and that could be automatically uh, automatically programmed. So those are examples how you could automate that visual for you using Tinderbox. And you know, when we have more time, we could uh, I'm happy to show you how to do that. But you know, we're we can wrap up the interview now. Um, okay. So well, a couple other things then. So what else would you like to see from a uh, tinderbox? Um, you'd say like additional training to make things easier. Um, what would some of the other things you'd like to see? I think um, an introduction to code. You know, these simple things like curly um, quotes or not, or you have to finish with a semicolon. The, the basic stuff about yeah, coding, yeah. I yeah. think it's something that would really help. And, um, and All right. the other thing I, I would like to have really, uh, to have a markdown template for fountain. You know, you, have, you can have a template to generate a preview with the markdown, mm -hmm. no? Yeah. But Fountain is a language for script writing. I Got think it. it's simple, you know? I, I don't think it's complicated to make this template because then I could really see it in, in screen writing format. Okay. But it's about that. Well, you know? maybe, maybe that's somebody, some of the members, and maybe maybe Mark Anderson and I can try to do that for you. We'll, we'll look at what Fountain is and and um, see if we can build a template for you. Yes, I think it for all the screen. I think there are other people writing and um, for cinema and television with Tinderbox and for us, it would be great, really. But, you know, not, this is not really important. What happens when I have to finish the script, when it mm -hmm. becomes big, I have mm -hmm. to go to... Uh, uh, scripts writing software, you know. So I have a simple export template. I yeah. I had a lot of problems to understand how export works in Tinderbox. In mm -hmm. Tinderbox, now I understand more or less. Yeah. But I really just need to get it inside a simple text file, and then I mm -hmm. can work in. Uh, yes. And so what Tinderbox helps you do is it gets you to ideate and to think and to get things yes. organized. And then once you've done that, you then pull it into a, uh, you know, the professional package to dust, to finish things off and, and, yes. and, and, and publish it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, th I, I'm, I'm terribly excited. You know, about that is something that Mark Anderson said in the, in a discussion that was really important for me. He said, don't ask Tinderbox 
to do things that it was not created to do, you know? It's right. a tool for notes. So if you need to write something big with, uh, with a lot of... No, that's not the function of Tinderbox, you know? I think mm -hmm. it's much more this way you, you can use Tinderbox to understand what you are thinking, you know? Yes. How you, you are imagining things, you know? That's... Yes. It's the best, you know. To do. Yeah, and the fact that you showed us where you can look at it in map view, you can look at it in outline view, you can put the pictures up and see the characters, you can yeah. add attributes and sort and find that that ability to curate your thinking, yes. and then through that curation process, create new insight uh, appears to be a very powerful um, uh, you know capability that Tinderbox gives you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. And yeah. and the idea that if I want to do something, I know that it's possible to do it in Tinderbox. <laughs> yeah. So 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 it's tell possible. me about about that. So in that situation, you said you're not a coder, and uh, what do you do when you, you when you just don't know what to do? I start to read all the tutorials. I go to the forum and I ask. I think the forum is great. You know, everybody's so you know easy to approach and. So it's when I need something that I don't know how to do, I start to dig. And yeah, and, yeah. And, and you found after that after some hours, the there is a result. You know, I can't yeah. find a, a way to do it. Yeah. And you found that the community has been really helpful for you, too. Yes. I have as well. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. Well, Roberto, thank you very much for taking this time and, no, and sharing with us what you're the project you're working on and everything you've done here. I just think it's. Um, uh, absolutely exceptional, and um, we're, we're really, really happy you shared your, your insights with us. I, I thank you. It was really nice yeah. to be thank with you. you here. Okay, thank you. thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that session. And as always, if you wouldn't mind, please like this video, uh, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye.